Welcome to Mid-Century Living, your weekly podcast about everything mid-century and how to bring the mid-century vibe to your everyday life. Happy Halloween, everyone, and welcome to a special bonus episode of Mid-Century Living. Fans of the show know that Halloween is my favorite holiday, so we wanted to release an extra episode to celebrate. Today's episode will be all about the history of Halloween from its origins up until the 1950s. Take it away, Gonzalo. Awesome. Happy Halloween, everyone. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about its history, uh, and Halloween happens to be among the oldest of human traditions. And this is mainly because it's a relationship between living and dead, and for whatever reason, we like love that relationship. <laughs> um, so every recorded civilization has some sort of ritual focused on this and what happens to people when they die. Um, and it kind of, again, cements our relationship with this unknown, this, uh, the dead and the unknown. So modern day observance can be traced to the Celtic festival of, I would say Samhain, but it's apparently pronounced Samhain or Samhain, um, AKA Halloween people. Um, <laughs> And it is celebrated the most in the USA. In 2021, the estimate is that consumers spent over 10 billion US dollars on costumes, decorations, treats, and other Halloween type expenses, which is a lot of money. That is a lot. Yeah. Um, anyway, Samhain is a Celtic uh, tradition where the Celts believed that the veil between the world of the living and the dead was at its thinnest. Um, and the dead could return and interact with living, including those spirits of people who may have been wronged by the living. Uh -oh. uh, and yeah, I know, right? <laughs> this is where we start getting spooky. Uh, pagan rites of this included sucking up on supplies for winter, aka candy, right? Slaughtering cattle, aka blood and gore and that kind of stuff, and disposing of bones on bones fire on bones fires. Um, which is actually where the word bonfire comes from, which is kind of cool. Neat! I didn't know that. Yeah. That's extra spooky. I love that. Yeah. Anyway, Christians uh, throughout the years tried to demonize this by repeating a wrong claim that uh, Sowin was the Celtic god of the dead um, and Halloween his feast. Uh, so thank you, 18th century British engineer Charles Valency, for writing about this without knowing anything about the ritual. <laughs> So, when Christianity came to Ireland, Samhain was celebrated by lighting a fire on the hill of Clagda, uh, which is also known as the Hill of the Ward, in County Meath, on the 31st of October. Uh, the hill is named after the Druidist Clagda, um, and here's where we start connecting with Christianity. Uh, there's a connection to uh, the Bible in the Book of Acts, um, and this connection to Christianity also includes... Pope Boniface IV, when he created All Saints Day, which he said it was on May 13th, a day to celebrate All Saints. Um, and it was on the 13th because of a uh, Roman festival of Lumuria, which is dedicated to placating the angry or restless dead. Um, but anyway, later along, Pope Gregory III comes around and he moves this feast to November 1st. Uh, and he's claiming, or not he's, but um, people claim that he moved it here to formally Christianize uh, Selwyn by making it All Hallows Eve. So here we start seeing the festival, the Celtic festival, Samhain, um, connecting to All Saints Day. And because it happens the day before All Saints Day, it's an Eve holiday, and it is called All Hallows Eve, which is another reinforcement of how we get the word Halloween. Um, so fast forward to the 1840s, uh, this is when we document, uh, its introduction to the USA. Uh, and that is when the Irish, uh, migrate to the USA following the displacement due to the, uh, potato famine in Ireland. Um, so the Irish Catholics celebrated All Hallows Eve, and here's also where the jack o' lantern arrives because there is an Irish folk tale of Stingy Jack, who happened to be a clever drunk man who fooled the devil into banning him from hell. But because of his sin, he also could not enter heaven. 
so the Irish would carve turnips and place a candle in it to protect themselves from spirits such as Stingy Jack. Um, <laughs> but when, yeah, but when the uh, Irish made it to the USA, um, the pumpkin became more popular because it's much easier to carve than a turnip. Now, I've never carved a turnip before, but I have carved pumpkins and it's not easy. Uh, I think probably why it's easier is because pumpkins are hollow. You'd have to hollow out the turnip. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's just like a big root vegetable. Unless they just carve little faces into the front of it and not like illuminate it from the inside. Well, no, but they had a candle in them. Oh, yeah, so, they did. And I've seen pictures. Fascinating. Yeah, that would be a lot of work, but totally worth it, um, I think, for the aesthetic. I might try that this year. I've... You're going to try that? I don't even know where I can find a turnip. I guess the vegetable aisle. Yeah, um, don't get them at Whole Foods because they're $4. Noted. They usually come in one-pound bags at, um, like, over by the cabbage in the grocery store. That's a lot of pounds of commitment anyway they're great for low carb diets as a potato substitute <laughs> i've never had them but maybe i should try them you can make turnip fries and you can add them like to stews instead of potatoes and they absorb the meat juices the same ish i mean it's pretty good it's not bad perhaps i'll try it it's cut <laughs> so yeah so it must have been easier to carve pumpkin uh, but what's happening a lot in this time um, was vandalism started to become kind of commonplace. Uh, people would go around and vandalize anything from uh, public spaces to private homes. I just listened to a podcast about ha Halloween pranking traditions and one old prank that I'm wondering if it came from around this time um, was lighting a cabbage on fire and holding it up against a keyhole in someone's front door so that when they came home, their house smelled like burnt cabbage for a couple days. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds horrible, but also kind of want to do it. Yeah, not it to sounds my hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> Who do I not like? Uh, but anyway, uh, fast forward to 1912 in Hiawatha, Kansas. Uh, Miss Hel Elizabeth... Krebs started getting tired of the vandalism to her house by uh, the marauding children wearing masks. Um, so she organized a party in 1913 in hopes that the party would tire kids out and they'd be too tired to vandalize the town. Um, unfortunately, uh, it didn't work. So her party, which she fully funded by herself, uh, did not work, and the city or the town still got vandalized. So the year after, in 1914, she invited the entire town to organize a party, and it was a success. And this kind of places Mrs. Krebs as the mother of modern Halloween, uh, a tradition in Kansas that still goes on through today with uh, parties, uh, kind of like, imagine like a block party. I love like that. Stuff. Yeah. Um. So it's unclear, though, how vandalism turned to go in the door asking for candy. Uh, but the tradition of doing that settled here by the 1930s uh, until the sugar shortage during World War II. So hello, mid-century podcast time, right? <laughs> uh, so that kind of stopped the tradition of going door to door for candy. But by 1950s, we had gone back to that and the tradition settled as a non-religious holiday centered around the young and character characterized by candy, spooky films, and paranormal themes, which is what we have today. Hooray! And that is the history of Halloween uh, from its beginnings to mid-century. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, of course. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode. As always, remember to subscribe to our show and leave a review. If you have questions or comments, reach out to us on Instagram at mclpodcast. You can also email us at info.mcliving at gmail.com. See you on Friday. Bye. Thank you for listening to Mid-Century Living. Please subscribe, tell your friends, and leave a review. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. 
You can also follow us on Instagram at MCL Podcast. See you next Friday.